Each business must establish certain characteristics and goals when designing a customer service function to meet both its own needs and those of its customers. Managers must understand what factors determine how customer service can best be delivered and they must clarify the nature of the tasks to be assigned to the customer service function. Determining where the organisation stands at present can be accomplished by conducting a customer service audit. Creating an effective customer service organisation starts with selecting the right people, as we discussed last week. Other things you need to do is to sensationalise the service experience for your customers. Good service is just not good enough anymore. A recent Gallup survey showed a customer who is emotionally connected to your place of business is likely to spend 46% more money than a customer who is just merely satisfied but not emotionally bonded. It's always good to set performance standards, outline the expectations of your employees on how they should act, speak, respond to customer needs and their requests. Sustain ongoing training and reinforcement. Good customer service skills are not natural for most people and effective customer service training must be reinforced and taught on a recurring basis. Survey your customers to reduce your defection rate. On average, businesses lose 15-20% to 20 of their customers each year to their competition. All businesses encounter a defection rate, but few do much about it. And finally, seek customer complaints with enthusiasm. I know this sounds a bit weird, but for every complaint you receive from customers, there are at least 10 other customers who visited your business, had the same criticism, but didn't say anything and defected to your competition. that we can make a difference for people. Like when they come by, they leave in a better mood. And a lot of people have told us that we made their day. Nice. <laughs> a customer came up to me and said it was the best fish they'd ever had. Something happened to me and I realized I was making people happy. Give me a big hug. This gave me a plus in my life. And I love serving the people now. Excuse me, Ty. Thank me, you love. The fish philosophy is about engaging people and creating positive change in their workplaces and home lives. Too much coffee! Too much coffee! <laughs> you know, are you being, this is a lousy stinking job, or are we being, well, we're just selling fish, or are you being, you know, world famous? Play pieces! Play pieces. You know, you're going to do something differently when you're being world famous than you are if you're being impatient. The fish philosophy embodies an entire way of life. It's been translated into 14 languages, and it's created positive change in thousands of small businesses, classrooms, Fortune 500 companies, and homes around the world. You don't have to throw fish. You just have to have the energy. You have to have the commitment. You have to have fun. You have to have fun at work. It's a simple choice. That's all it is. I have it.
Here's something you don't see very often. People lined up for hours to buy a device that's going to cost anywhere from $500 to $800. These folks are in line to buy the new iPad. You know, I think there are two words that are primarily responsible for the Apple Store success. Enriching lives. That was the original vision behind the Apple Store. It wasn't to sell you stuff. It was to enrich your life, to earn your loyalty, to build a customer relationship for life. When you start enriching lives, a lot of interesting things start to happen. One, you hire for smiles. You hire friendly, passionate employees. Number two, you have a non-commissioned sales floor. So when you walk into an Apple store, people will spend an hour with you without fear of being reprimanded by their boss because it's all about answering your questions and meeting your needs. Everything about the way they communicate with you will change. That's the third thing you get when you enrich people's lives. For example, they will greet you with a personalized warm welcome. They will end with a fond farewell and an invitation to return. And the fourth thing is you will add a lot of benefit to your life, or at least they will try to give you a lot of benefit. For example, one-to-one -one instructional programs, which are personalized workshops to help you unleash your creativity. There are so many things that change when you stop selling things and you start enriching people's lives. So the lesson that we learned from the success of the Apple Store, and it has become the most profitable retailer in America, the big lesson is stop selling stuff. Start enriching and profits will follow.